chances were being taken at Nuremberg as the hour of verdicts and sentences approached, a wide military cordon ringed the courthouse and many additional troops were on guard to deal with any eventuality. But no reports of any attempts to interfere with the course of justice were received. Even if demonstrations, attacks or rescue attempts had been contemplated, it doesn't look as if they'd have met with much success. For all By attitude, others kept up an appearance of arrogance to the end. Crazy arrogance in the case of Hess. There was much handshaking, and for many of them, this was the last opportunity, for now the verdicts were to be pronounced. Before the verdicts on individuals were given, Lord Justice Lawrence spoke for the tribunal on the subject of the SS. In connection with the administration of the concentration camps, the SS embarked on a series of experiments on human beings which were performed on prisoners of war or concentration camp inmates. These experiments included freezing to death and killing by poison bullets. Hess, in spite of having a blanket round his knees, appeared to develop cramp or something Ribbentrop's attentions proved ineffective and Hess was allowed to leave the court for a time. The first individual verdict dealt with Goering, Lord Justice Lawrence speaking. Goering claims its purposes have been misunderstood, but admits that as a matter of course and a matter of duty, we would have used Russia for our purposes, conquer. The verdict on Hess was delivered in Russian, but it might have been any language for all the attention Hess paid to it. Mr. Justice Biddle dealt with Ribbentrop's case. The tribunal finds that Ribbentrop is guilty on all four counts. Stryker, his persecution of the Jews was notorious. The tribunal finds that Stryker is not guilty on count one, but he is guilty on count four. The tribunal finds that Schott is not guilty on this indictment and directs that he shall be discharged by the marshal when the tribunal presently adjourns. The tribunal finds that Lawson is not guilty under this indictment and directs that he shall be discharged by the marshal when the tribunal presently adjourns. As we know, in addition to Schacht and von Parthen, Hans Fritscher was also acquitted. All three, not unnaturally, received congratulations from the others. The scene that followed later when the three men were permitted a mild celebration and interviewed by the press has received much publicity. But it's really beside the point. The point being that the tribunal acquitted them on the charges brought against them. It certainly stresses the fairness of the trial. On the last day, the day of sentences, filming wasn't permitted. Outside the courthouse, after the sentences, newspapers were quickly sold out. As I say, the final scenes inside the court couldn't be photographed, but there is this record of some of the last words spoken during the historic trial of Nuremberg. Defendant Hermann Wilhelm Goering, the International Military Bureau, sentences you to death by hanging. Defendant Rudolf Hess, the tribunal sentences you to imprisonment for life.